This is the Mercedes AMG EQS 53, the pinnacle of luxury and technology for Mercedes in 2023. This car is super advanced, and I'll show you how advanced. This is a copy of Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. This book has 257 pages. Not bad, but the user manual for the EQS 53 has 557 pages, which just goes to show how much tech is crammed into this car. So I thought I'd get rid of that, tap into this and show you guys what makes this car so advanced. The first thing I wanna show you are these amazing headlights. Now these are completely digital. They're made up of 1.3 million individual pixels. So basically what you've got are two 1.3 megapixel projectors, which can project images onto the road ahead of you. When you unlock the car, they can project a digital rain signature or the Mercedes and AMG logos on the floor or a wall in front of the car. It looks amazing. Plus they light the road up incredibly without dazzling oncoming drivers. Let me show you these wheels. So they're 21 inches and they look really cool, but there's another very clever feature. It has rear wheel steering. If I turn my steering wheel to the right, the rear wheels turn to the left. If I do the opposite and turn the steering wheel to the left, the rear wheel turns to the right. The idea is that this system gives the car a really tight turning circle. Without it, it would be around 12 meters, but with it, it's less than 11. Speaking of left and right, how do you adjust the door mirrors? Well, there's actually a camera system built into the dashboard, which can see where your eyes are looking. So if I look at my right hand mirror, the camera system knows. So when I press the button to adjust the mirror, it adjusts that mirror. But check this out. If I look at the other mirror while pressing the same button, that mirror isn't moving anymore. That mirror is, but if I look back, suddenly it starts to move again. I mean, it's totally unnecessary, but also incredibly cool. If you thought that was clever, then check this out. This car comes with its own app called Mercedes Me. I'll just get rid of the Auto Trader app. How did that get there? Right, so with this app, you can do a hell of a lot. You can check the state of charge, your remaining range, you can adjust the climate control and actually control individual zone by zone temperatures, including activating or deactivating the heated seats for different passengers. But it goes deeper. If you go into the more menu, you can actually control the windows and the sunroof. Watch this, I'm gonna slide it to open, put in my pin, the app then sends a message up into the cloud, back down to the car, and all the windows open. Now, I'm gonna open the sunroof, enter my pin, send it up into a satellite somewhere, and back it comes down to the car, and the sunroof opens. I know what you're thinking. Quite a few cars have this feature already, but does your car have this? So, not only can you open and close your windows and your sunroof, you can crack them as well. The idea being that if you're at home, and you fancy giving your car a bit of ventilation, you can do that as well. Watch this. I've activated ventilation mode and they'll slide up, but not all the way. They stop with just enough of a gap to keep the cabin cool. A very clever feature, I think you'll agree. Let me open it up again and show you something that's even more clever. Right, up to the cloud, back down to the car, windows open. What happens if it rains? Don't worry about it, Mercedes have thought of that as well. I'll grab my trusty bottle of water and this car actually uses the rain sensor to detect when it's raining and can then shut the windows and the sunroof if it rains. How clever is that? Okay, let me show you the back of the EQS 53. A bit less going on here, but still quite cool. I love the lights back here. It's got this full width light bar and also these amazing looking helix design lights at the side, which do a really cool animation when you lock and unlock the car. The thing that people ask me most though is where on earth is the button for opening the boot? Not down there, not up here. It's actually hidden away in the Mercedes logo. But before I show you that, that logo opens up to reveal the reversing camera, which combines with all the other cameras on the car to give you a nice 360 view of the car, which makes it really easy to park. And then it triples up 
as the button for opening the boot. Just push the top half and it opens up to give you a lot of storage. And then when you're done, you can press the button on the left to close it or the button on the right to close and lock. And I say lock because that brings me very neatly to talk about security. Obviously, the EQS has an alarm system, but it goes a step further than that. The cameras that I mentioned earlier can be used as part of a security system. So in other words, if some terrible person were to run into your car or to try and smash it or break into it somehow, the cameras would actually pick up their actions and then send pictures of that potential crime directly to the Mercedes Me app. Now, unfortunately, we are in the middle of nowhere, so there's no way I could possibly demonstrate that feature to you. So you're gonna have to take my word for it. But basically, it has an incredible CCTV system. What? What? Collision detected. Oi! What? Oi! No worries. I've actually got the images of the perpetrator trying to break into the car so I can then contact the police and get you nicked, sunshine. Okay, the next thing I wanna show you in the EQS is the hyper screen. It's basically three separate screens, a 12 inch display for the passenger, a 12 inch display for the driver and a big 17 inch OLED display for your infotainment system. I'm actually covering the cameras up because there's a system in here that I wanna show you for authenticating the user so the car can identify how and when to load your favorite settings. So you do that in one of three ways. You can actually either use your mobile phone by tapping in a pin code, by using a fingerprint reader, or by letting the camera in the car see your face. And it should recognize me if I select my user, show my face, and look at that, it's loading my favorite settings. It knows that I want the sunroof blind to be open and the seat in this particular position. Now, how do I change my settings? So let me go into settings, that's the first thing. And then you can change various features, including your seat position. I can tell the car I'm four foot nine and it will automatically adjust the seat for a person who is four foot nine by sliding me forward all the way. Look at that, this is what a four foot nine person might feel like it doesn't actually crush you against the steering wheel. There are sensors to stop you killing yourself. But if I go back now and adjust it for a person who is seven foot three, it will do the opposite. It will actually push my seat all the way back and adjust the steering wheel at the same time to give me the perfect driving position if I was seven foot three. So that's how I'd feel if I was an NBA basketball player. I'll actually put it back now to uh, 5'11", 5'10", 5'10 and a half, uh, and that will make me much more comfortable in the correct position. And the car remembers all of that and loads it when it sees your face or reads your fingerprint. Very cool. What else can you do with a hyperscreen? Well, you can amuse yourself to no end. So you can use the passenger display to play games or browse the internet or watch YouTube, for example. You can't do it while you're on the move, sadly, but you can do it while you're charging the car, for example, which will help you pass the time. You can also do the same thing on the central display. So I'll load up one of my favorite features in this car, which is Tetris which is a pretty basic and old game, but it allows you just to while away a few minutes while the car soaks up some energy. It's not the easiest game to play with a touchscreen, believe me, you have to tap it and sort of drag it, or you can use buttons on the steering wheel, but I guess that's part of the challenge, isn't it? It's all fun at the end of the day. The next thing I wanna show you is something called the zero layer user interface. Now, basically it's these little tiles along the bottom of the screen. And these are controlled using artificial intelligence. The car learns what you like to do and when you like to do it, and then gives you those options so you can turn them on or off at the right moment. For example, the car will know if you like to go to the gym at six o'clock on a Thursday every single Thursday, and it will recognize that you like to turn on your massage feature after the gym, and it will give you the option to turn that on in that place at that time. Or it knows that if you go home every night and you like to open the boot first thing, it will give you the button to open the boot just to give you the options that you want at the right time to make life a little bit easier for you. The next thing I wanna show you is the mapping system 
in this car and how beautifully rendered it is. I'm going to zoom in to the O2 in London and just look at that. The level of detail is exceptional. I'll zoom into the river as well. You can just see the water flowing. It's all beautifully done in 3D. I'll move across now to, where can we go to? Canary Wharf and just look at that. You got HSBC Bank, you got Citibank, and all of it is just rendered beautifully. And you can fly through in 3D. And at nighttime, all these buildings have the lights coming on in the evening to make them look even cooler. Let's take a little tour along the river now. It could be a bit faster for my liking, but it is fun to use. I'm going to move across and see what else we can see. So over here, we've got the Gherkin in all its splendor and the way that the skyscrapers pop up is just absolutely staggering. I'll move along to another little landmark over here, one of my favourites in London, which is the London Eye. And again, could be quicker, but the way that it's rendered is just absolutely sensational. It's a lovely feature. This costs £7,995 extra, but arguably it's worth it. The last thing I want to show you is something called a HEPA filter. You might have noticed that Mercedes EQS cars don't allow you to open the bonnet. If you want to do something as simple as topping up the windscreen wiper fluid, you have to access it from a flap on the side. And that's because under the bonnet is a high efficiency particulate air filter. Effectively, it's the size of four A4 sheets of paper, but because of their porous structure, they have an enormous surface area, apparently equivalent to 150 football pitches. Now, that allows the car to clean the outside air before it enters the cabin. Bring on the diesel! Now that is Greg's very lovely, very diesel-y 330D, and if he revs it, what should happen is it should pollute the outside environment but that shouldn't reach the cabin because it will actually be filtered out before it reaches inside the car. And look at that. Yes, outside, absolutely filthy and disgusting, but inside apparently is as clean as a clean room or an operating theater. It even filters out horrible smells. Incredible. So that is my technology review of the Mercedes AMG EQS. 53. Let me know what you think. Is this the most technologically advanced car on the planet? Also, let me know if you want to see a full review of this thing on the channel in the near future. We are going to be running it for several months, so expect to see this car again very soon, going head to head with some other big hitters in the world of electric cars. Stick around. <laughs>